So I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys heard the news. Lightweight has their next big fights without the champion though and without Justin Gaethje involved. So Charles Oliveira is going to be fighting Armin Saryukian for officially the number one contender fight. The winner is going to go up against Islam Makashev in the summer as Islam is recovering from an injury. Why was he saying he wanted to fight in March when he couldn't even do it? That part I didn't really understand too much and and Dana said the plan was Charles vs. Islam after all. They were looking to do Charles vs. Islam, but Islam couldn't make it, so they plugged in Armin instead. The fact that Armin or Charles is going to fight him next, it means that Justin Gaethje doesn't even have a fight. And he's not going to fight Islam Makashev. The only likely matchup I could think of is him to fight Max Holloway. If that happens, it should be a pretty good fight. I think Justin Gaethje will win. I think Max Holloway will suffer a lot of damage, probably more than any other fight. But there are definitely some good things he could do against Justin Gaethje as well, which I'll get into further if the fight does get announced. So, Charles Oliveira, Armin Saryukian are on UFC 300, which I think is a great fight to put on a card that big. The other fight that got announced is Dustin Poirier versus Benoit Saint Denis. That fight came out of nowhere because the rumors were Benoit Saint Denis versus Benil Dariush. But the fact that he's getting Dustin Poirier means number one, Dustin really wanted a fight. BSD is way lower than him in the rankings, so it makes it very risky for someone like Dustin Poirier. Dustin is number three. BSD is number 12. This also throws out all those talks about Nate Diaz coming back to fight him and him fighting Colby Covington or something like that. And this fight is going to be the co-main event of UFC 299 and it's going to be five rounds because both fighters wanted it to be five rounds, which I absolutely do respect, but it's very likely this fight does not go to a decision. Both these guys are great finishers. And the funny thing about both these lightweight fights is that the veterans are both underdogs. Charles Oliveira is an underdog against Armin, and for some of the betting lines, even Dustin Poirier is an underdog against BSD. Charles Oliveira and Dustin Poirier should be the favorite going into it. Thinking that Armin will beat Oliveira is a lot more reasonable after what you saw Armin able to do in his last fight, in my opinion. I mean, he knocked out Benil Dariush so quickly. He has that kind of power. We know Charles Oliveira does not have a great chin. He gets knocked down in most of his fights. And Armin's one of the few fighters that can actually grapple at a very high level. So if he drops Charles Oliveira, the general thought is that he can follow him to the ground and potentially hold good top position, land some big ground and pound shots, which he absolutely has the ground and pound on Yoel Alvarez was absolutely nasty and if he does that to Charles Oliveira after dropping him that fight could be finished off very quickly and the difference between Armin and Islam is that you don't see Islam have the same kind of ground and pound usually right he doesn't seem to generate that same kind of power or steam while on top so I can absolutely see paths for Armin Saryukin to beat Charles Oliveira but the thing here is Armin makes a lot of mistakes in the stand-up and even paid for it when he fought guys like Matush Gamera of all fighters even though Armin pushed the pace way too quickly in the beginning and then of course when he fought against Joaquim Silva that was a big blemish in some of his recent performances because Joaquim Silva should not be doing that well against him and he did but that's fighting for you you never know what happens Joaquim Silva is a powerful striker that can hurt you if he connects to you the right way one good moment for Joaquim and he could turn the fight around but Armin was still able to quickly come back after getting hurt and finish off Joaquim Silva later on but if those opportunities are there for Joaquim I think there should be other opportunities for Charles Oliveira Charles hits extremely hard very precise he has a good one too I think a jab on Armin just by itself can disrupt him all over the place the high kicks from Armin and the overhands generally could be quite dangerous for Charles but the thing about Charles is a lot of people like to say that his defense is not good which is a very fair point but what about his defense isn't necessarily good where's the worst part of it it's never really about him not picking his hands up he's always got his hands up so these looping shots that could come at him from neutral not when he's throwing punches high kicks and hooks from islam when charles wasn't throwing first usually got blocked for an example these high kicks and overhands are going to be a lot harder to get through they can still do it because of the small gloves and maybe they can get around the guard but generally speaking it's the straight punches or the counter punches that get to him when he's throwing a strike, he's very open to getting hit, but he's also opening you up as well. And Armin Saryukin also doesn't have generally great defense. He holds his hands up as well. So in a general way right there, Armin and Charles are somewhat similar with their defenses, with the fact that they both rely on keeping their hands up rather than good head movement. But the fact that he's so much shorter than Charles leaves head kicking opportunities open for Charles Oliveira, leaves knee opportunities open for Charles Oliveira. And Armin likes a lot of these squat feints and low level feints to fake like he's going to go for a takedown or an overhand. And a lot of times when he goes for this, it gives Charles a lot to work with, with the high kicks, with the knees, with potentially some uppercuts, and also the one-two. 
If he could pop the jab on that squat feint, he could very easily relieve any kind of pressure for Armin and get him moving back just simply off the jab on that squat feint. The clinch could be very dangerous for Armin as well. Those knees could be very damaging to someone like this. And I could see where Armin throws these overhands similar to what Justin Gaethje was doing when he got tied up by Charles. And Charles was moving with the motions, pulled down Justin's head and fired down the right straight as Justin pulled out. And I could see this happening for Armin if he cannot get an opening to get a takedown because the knees are going to be so threatening from there right he does want to duck into one of those knees so he might be willing to pull out as well and charles can line him up for something similar or pull his head down as he's disengaging from the clinch for the high kick i think there's a lot more that charles can work with here to get a finish on armin saryukin but of course i am not ruling out any chances of armin saryukin finishing Charles Oliveira with strikes. And then with Dustin and BSD. Dustin completely excels when it comes to just the fundamental striking area. More so boxing, because he's not that much of a kicker. But BSD is big, he's strong, he's powerful, he can wrestle, he can grapple. He also has very good killer instinct. The one thing I just don't like what he does that can get him into trouble with Dustin is that he'll go on these suicide missions sometimes. He has that quick trigger on the guillotine, which I don't like, that can put him in a very bad position with Dustin. Sometimes he opens himself up big time when he's throwing kicks, and I see Dustin just punching him out from there. And I don't know how well he's going to be into the third round. He's never been to the third round in the lightweight division ever before. At welterweight, he's been to the third round twice, and one of those he lost against it's Zaleski Dos Santos. In the lightweight division, he's finishing off all of his opponents rather quickly. The one that went the longest was Thiago Moises. And Benoit Saint Denis looked pretty good for that fight. Now, what happens if it goes to the third or fourth? Because Dustin is very tough and he has good defense. I'm expecting Benoit Saint Denis to get countered quite a bit to the point he gets softened up too much and Dustin pushes the pace on him and then finds an eventual finish, I'll say third or fourth rounds. And the thing is, both these guys are going to be southpaws, so the high kick opening for Benoit is not going to be there as easily. Dustin has experience of fighting high-level southpaws, while Benoit does not. And the jab from Dustin is going to be activated in this fight. He has a good pressure starter jab, so he uses his jab very well to begin his pressure from a neutral position, and then just adds on with the pace. And he also has a very good counter jab that he showed even against Conor McGregor. But the thing is, Benoit's got a pretty good snappy jab himself. You don't really see him against southpaws, so that jab is not going to be as open for him. But the time he threw it, like against Ishmael Bonfim, I mean, it's a pretty snappy jab, man. And he really covers distance quickly with it. And he has some good pulls that he was showing against Thiago Moises. Even though Thiago was mainly throwing the right overhand, he's not that much of a striker. Fast pulls were there for counter opportunities. And even shown against Ishmael Bonfim, Benoit St. Denis does have a good counter double leg. And he works off that jab very well shown against Ishmael Bonfim sitting behind it going forward and then back with the jab Bonfim tried to line up that right hand but didn't really anticipate the double leg as soon as Benoit stepped back he was able to get under the right hand for the double leg he has a good ability to collect the hips get on top of you he seems very heavy when he's on top using the neon belly which can fool the opponent and making them think that he's going to move into side control but then use that to redirect into full mount and even if one of his opponents tries to kick off the cage or kick off the floor in order to bump them in reverse to get on top, he has shown to be aware enough to not just accept the position, but work off the underhook to get up. The only thing that could backfire in Benoit St. Denis is the amount of times he just goes for these risky techniques, man. Spinning attacks sometimes like he did against Miranda, which was pretty cool. Big winging overhands. And these guys are not going to capitalize at the same kind of extent that Dustin Poirier will, right? Give Dustin Poirier enough of these openings and you could definitely find yourself getting hurt. So I do expect a more difficult first round for Dustin. Figuring out Benoit St. Denis, sitting behind the jab a lot and then countering with his check right hook, established pressure off the jab. A few fighters throughout Benoit's career have been able to pressure him and I think Dustin should be able to do something quite similar but Dustin usually gets opponents moving back to the cage once he softens them up a bit. And I think that might also be a thing for BSD but BSD definitely has an opportunity to win this fight. He's powerful enough. He's very good on the ground. He has a great ability to snatch your back, shown in the Bunfeen fight. The only thing that can go against some of the grappling is how trigger happy he can be for some submissions when he's put in a disadvantaged position. That's the main thing, but he has extremely good top pressure and very well transitions. So I'm going with both Charles Oliveira and Dustin Poirier to win by TKO.